see Braun Strowman come out and he says that everybody wants to see him take excuse me, take down everybody, just beat down the big show. And he says, no, I'm going to do it on my time, and my time is going to happen at WrestleMania. But there's a little more of an interesting factor into this. So earlier on in the night, Sami Zayn talked about wanting to dedicate a victory in the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal to Mick Foley. And Stephanie McMahon says, yeah, you see, I know that you're kind of a Mick Foley guy, but at the same time, you have to remember that this is not his regime anymore. It's my regime. And in my regime, you have to earn your way to it. So she puts him in a no disqualification matchup against Kevin Owens. If he wins, he earns his spot in the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal. If he does not, then he will be fired. The matchup itself between Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn, again, just beautiful, magical, just great. Uh, very few, you know, weapons were really involved with this, but at the same time, I think the no disqualification stipulation worked out perfectly. Uh, there was a lot of great spots, including Sami Zayn doing like the dive from the stage and then the DDT on the steps by Kevin Owens, even doing like his, uh, back body press to Sami Zayn off of the steel steps. Just a lot of great spots in this matchup, uh, Sami Zayn hitting his, you know, of course, tor torpedo DDT through the third ropes. Just is awesome. Uh, Samoa Joe got involved in this matchup, and we originally thought that, oh, wow, here's going to be where Sami Zayn loses his job. But then Chris Jericho, oh, excuse me, makes the save and costs Kevin Owens the matchup, and Sami Zayn gets his entry into the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal. Here's the interesting thing about this. I see a lot of names that are on here, and they are mainly Raw superstars. Sami Zayn's name on here, Braun Strowman's on here, Golden Truth, Shining Stars, Curtis Axel, Bo Dallas, Big Show, Kurt Hawkins, Apollo Crews, and Mojo Raleigh. But I do not see a certain name on here, and that being Samoa Joe. So I am curious if they are actually going to have Samoa Joe just be a part of the main card. Possibly... Oh, excuse me again, possibly in the main matches of maybe Kevin Owens and Chris Jericho, or maybe in the match between uh, Seth Rollins and uh, Triple H, maybe, which I'll get into in just a minute. But do I see him maybe getting into the Under the Giant Memorial Battle Royal? I, uh, I, I don't think that that's going to happen. I think that with the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal being advertised for the pre-show, I think that they're going to save Samoa Joe for a bigger spot for the night. So, I mean, it's still anybody's guess as to who's going to be a part of the card for the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal, who's going to be a part of that list. But, I mean, it's a pretty decent list, to say the least. I mean, it's just basically filler for anybody else that wants to be a part of WrestleMania, I guess. So, yeah. Boy. All right, so let's go talking about Seth Rollins versus Triple H. Who, boy. I mean, you talk about some of the best matches that Raw is going to provide at WrestleMania. This is one of them, again. And the promo that happened tonight in which uh, Seth Rollins had to sign a hold harmless agreement basically saying that if you get hurt, if you hurt your leg again, you can't sue the company, you can't sue Triple H, you can't sue Stephanie McMahon, you can't do none of that. Uh, th this promo here was just great. And again, Triple H just showing again why he can be such a great heel and such a dick on the mic. He did such an amazing job. And then Seth Rollins having probably one of the best, uh, I don't know if I would say comebacks would be the best word to it. Well, I think one of the best, you know, rebuttals to the the basic uh, you know spitfire that Triple H shot out he basically responds that you know he wants to regain what he was before he met Triple H he wants to regain Seth freaking Rollins which is honestly the best thing that I heard from him in that promo and it's honestly a really good motivation he wants to prove to everybody that he was still good long before he teamed up with Triple H long before he even you know met with Triple H, 
He wants to prove to Triple H that you know he could still do well on his own and that he can be Seth freaking Rollins. This was the the story behind this matchup is so very well built up. I mean, oh my gosh, geez Louise, you have to take into account that you know they factor in the fact that you know Seth Rollins was the first NXT champion and Triple H was there for that. When Seth Rollins won the Money in the Bank ladder match, he was there for that. When Seth Rollins was the WWE World Heavyweight Champion, Triple H was there for that. And the story there, again, of just Seth Rollins just making him the protege, making him the architect, making him the guy, just definitely makes things just so much more interesting when it comes to this matchup. And it's going to be very interesting to see how well they do this. So the contract was signed. Triple H tried to take an early advantage during the signing tonight on Raw. Uh, It seemed like Triple H was going to hit the pedigree, Seth Rollins counters. Uh, basically Seth Rollins is showing that he is ready for WrestleMania and in this non-sanctioned matchup, it'll be Triple H versus Seth Rollins and holy cow, it's going to be a bloodbath to say the least. It's going to be intense. It is going to be something that will be very much a, a spectacle to behold here. Holy cow, it's going to be amazing. All right, let's go on to another matchup here. Uh, talking about uh, Chris Jericho versus Kevin Owens for the United States Championship match. Whew. This matchup, in all honesty, you looked at how they broke down the card tonight. And I think right off the bat they had like Goldberg versus Lesnar. And then they talked about Roman Reigns and The Undertaker. And then a couple SmackDown matches. Uh, but the final match that they talked about was Kevin Owens versus Chris Jericho. I look at that and I think to myself, that could possibly be the main event. If it is the main event, that would be a first time ever that the United States Championship has gone on last at a WrestleMania. It's very unlikely that it will happen, but this definitely feels like a main event feel matchup between Chris Jericho and Kevin Owens. This matchup in and of itself is just, oh man, the story behind this, I mean, from them nine just, you know, pairing up just to get back at Enzo and Cass, to them slowly just building up this kind of friendship to like a brotherhood, to just being very close to each other, and then just the build-up, the build-up to them slowly breaking up. We thought like, oh, it's going to happen here, it's going to happen here, it's going to happen here. Uh, But it eventually happened at the Festival of Friendship that Chris Jericho put on. It was just beautiful how this went around because again, it just showed him, you know, creating a great sculpture and then the painting, which is now available on www.shop.com. Oh my gosh, that's amazing. That is amazing. Uh, To just everything that they did. And then the final, you know, nail on the coffin of this whole deal where uh, Chris Jericho pulls out a list and he asks the question, how come my name's on this list? And it's the list of KO, Kevin Owens beating him down. Chris Jericho costing Kevin Owens the Universal Championship and just building this up again and again so well. For the longest time, it seemed like Kevin Owens was going to have the momentum going into it. But Chris Jericho tonight got his hands on Kevin Owens, and you know he's going to get more of that this Sunday at WrestleMania. Especially with the U.S. title on the line, it's going to be very interesting to see how things play out. Now, as a lot of people know, Chris Jericho is going to be taking some time off to film with Fozzie and do some tour dates and stuff like that. So it seems pretty academic that they could put the United States Championship on Kevin Owens this Sunday, but you can't count out the fact that maybe they might actually have Chris Jericho retain tonight so that uh, at uh, WrestleMania, that way he can have that feel-good moment, WrestleMania moment for him. And then uh, the following night, they have the title drop back to Kevin Owens. Uh, it's very interesting to see how well they're going to do this because obviously they need to find a way to write off Chris Jericho, whether he just, you know, rides off into the sunset or whether he just gets beaten down, something like that. We'll have to wait and see how well it goes. We'll have to see what happens. Either way, Kevin Owens versus Jericho is going to be another matchup that I think is going to just tear the house down. It's going to burn the house down. It's going to be an amazing matchup. The amount of hatred between the two of them is not only hot, but also the amount of just excitement that is put into this matchup is going to be um, is going to really make it interesting. All right, so we go into talking about the Undertaker versus Roman Reigns. 
Oh, man. Um, okay, so how this matchup kind of started about was, I guess, the whole deal where Roman Reigns and Undertaker had that stare down between the two of them at the Royal Rumble, and then Undertaker got eliminated by Roman Reigns, and then the following night after Fastlane, Undertaker came out, and he, you know, he chokeslammed Roman Reigns, and then blah, blah, blah. That just This is another cluster of really bad booking when it's come to WWE. I mean, they had the little mind game deal, not as well as it should have been. Uh, we had Roman Reigns spearing the Undertaker, and then Undertaker sitting up. Uh, then tonight, really, we just saw Undertaker digging a hole for Roman Reigns for like a special place in his yard, in his graveyard for his soul, where he says like, you know, there's a specific spot in hell for you. And he talks about, you know, again, making Roman Reigns rest in peace. And then the weirdest thing of the Undertaker, you know, lifting his arms up, the lightning sound effects happened. And I thought to myself, is this, is this, um, is there like a glitch or something going on? Is there something more that was supposed to happen? But Undertaker just started lowering his arms and lowering his arms and lowering his arms. And he makes the lights go out. I think up until that point, I was feeling nothing. But then when the lights go out, I think I got a little like a chill where it's like, oh, okay, that's actually really freaky. Again, Undertaker knows how to freaking send chills down your spine even after so long. Holy cow. It's just really amazing how well he does these things. Uh, I just wish they would have had more to the story than that. But I guess there's really not that much. I mean, Roman Reigns doesn't seem too intimidated. It's probably because, you know, Undertaker's not as, you know, young as he used to be. He's not in the prime of his life. So it's just one of those things where it's like, you know, I can beat an old man. It's not really that hard to do. So it's going to be interesting to see how this matchup goes. I think it might be one of the more underwhelming matches. If not, somebody's going to call it overrated. And I love The Undertaker, but I really just want him to retire after this match. Want him to have a good match with Roman Reigns. Give Roman the victory so that way he can start his program with Brock Lesnar and then move on from there. And Undertaker can go into the Hall of Fame next year. It would be awesome. Speaking of Brock Lesnar, let's talk about the Universal Championship matchup in which we see Brock Lesnar challenging Roman Goldberg. Roman Goldberg. Yeah, that's what I mean. It's the guy who originated the spear and the guy who made the spear famous, Roman Goldberg. So Goldberg came back at Survivor Series, beat Brock Lesnar in under two minutes. And then he competed in the Royal Rumble, eliminated Brock Lesnar. And then he won the Universal title in a matter of, in a matter of 20 seconds, basically. And now they're building up this matchup between Brock Lesnar and Goldberg. Uh, <laughs> okay, so a few things about this matchup is that, you know, it's been building for a while. And now we are going to see Goldberg versus Lesnar 2 at WrestleMania. But it's really, you know, Goldberg versus Lesnar 3. And honestly, right now, this is one of those things where it's like, I want this feud to just end, like, right now. This is not going to be one of the best matches that I've seen. Even with, you know, Goldberg's physique, his, he's not that young anymore. He's going to be very, very brittle when it comes to this matchup. I see Brock Lesnar beating Goldberg in a matter of minutes, maybe. It, this is just, um, I, I don't understand why this match is even happening. This matchup could have happened at Fastlane. We could have got it done and over with and be like, okay, fine. Let's have Goldberg face off against somebody else. Goldberg versus Roman Reigns, maybe. That would have been better. Brock Lesnar versus, say, Sami Zayn. Somebody, somebody else. But we're getting the Universal Championship matchup. And honestly, the only thing that's really kind of keeping me intrigued with this is just listening to Paul Heyman. That's it. That's really all it is about uh, Monday with uh, Raw's Universal Championship matchup this Sunday. It's just listening to Paul Heyman, and that's about it. 
This matchup had better not be the main event, although this is going to be one of the shortest main events in WrestleMania history. And that-